as uh, you may uh, you may hear that um, there is uh, a suggestion for uh, hybrid um, classes. So uh, uh, I send you already in our Telegram group. Um, like a questionnaire, only have one question. If you, uh, if there is face-to-face -face class, you will attend, yes or no, you have to answer yes or no, okay? In the Telegram group, you will see the link for each group. So in our Telegram group, there is link for uh, group, E and the group C, you are a group C here. So even copy it. But of course, not now. You can uh, do it after we finish the lecture. OK. So you have to go and answer if you. Uh, if you would like the class to be face to face or stay uh, online. It's optional. You have to answer if you will attend face to face or no. Yes or no, no or yes. OK, so it's one question only like this. Like this. Are you going to attend the programming two course face to face during the hybrid education? If you don't want, then you can choose no. If you want, you can choose Yes, yes means you want to attend face to face. No means uh, you don't want to attend face to face. OK. Uh, anyway, the midterm exam, as you can, you know, it will be uh, online. Later, I will send you um, a video file. OK, or a video link for uh, how it will be. Actually, it's like the assignment. It will be uh, using OIS system. In the OIS system, you will download the file of the exam, read the question, answer using extra papers, OK, using handwriting in the white papers not a small paper, not a carton or any paper around you. You have to prepare uh, some uh, A4 papers, a clean paper to write your answer. Then take a photo for your answer or scan it. It's better if you uh, merge it as one PDF file, but if you cannot, it's OK to upload them as separate files, like what you did in the homework when you upload the homework. But the difference here, the exam will open for one hour. So you have to be ready on OIS system. When the uh, exam start, you can upload, uh, you can download the file, read the question, answer the question, then the exam time will be 10 minutes. After this 10 minutes finish, you have to scan. You will have around 5 to 10 minutes only to scan your answer and send the file. So 60 minutes for the exam, 5 or 10 minutes for scan and upload your uh, question. So if you find the uh, time 70 minutes, it doesn't mean you will upload after this 70 minutes. You will upload before the end of this 70 minutes. This means you have 60 minutes only for the exam. Don't come after that and say, oh, I did not get the time to upload. This means you use all the time for only answer. So the exam will be only 60 minutes. Don't use the 70 minutes for the answer. Use only 60 minutes and then the 10 minutes, remain 10 minutes only to scan and upload your 
answer. Okay. So I will send you a video later to describe all the steps for you. However, you must know it from the uh, homework because it's same like the homework, the assignment. Okay, let's continue with our uh, lecture. Actually, last time we did not complete the uh, whole lecture note for the previous week. Okay, so in the previous week, um, our subject was the relation between pointers and array. Then we stopped here. Yes, last thing, pointers and multidimensional array. And then we stopped here. Okay, just a moment. Okay, so we stopped here. We already finished this one, we stopped here. Here we speak about uh, one important subject, which is call by value and uh, call by reference. So we speak about the relation between pointers and the argument of the function, okay? We know the function and how to use the function and what we did until now, it's called by value, except if you remember last semester, we use call by reference only when we use the array. Because array, it's a pointer. Actually, to use call by reference or to pass the reference for any variable for the function, you need to use the pointers. Let, let me describe what's the meaning of call by value, what's the meaning of call by reference, and what's the difference between them. When you have function, for example, function, and this function, you want to call it, and you will give the argument or the passing value for this function, you have two ways to pass this argument. The regular way or the normal way that we used until now so far, it's called by value. This means when we call the function using the name of the function and we pass here, we pass only a copy of the variable, the value of the variable. So when you said function, a, B, for example, then you did not really pass the variable A or variable B. You only pass the value of the variable A and the value of the variable B. Even you can call the function, if it's take two integer, you can say uh, five and 10, for example, as passing. Why? Because it it's, can take the value. We will give examples uh, for uh, call by value. This is the meaning of call by value. When you pass the variable or the value for the function, you actually pass its value, not passing the uh, original variable itself. So if the value of A equals 7, for example, and B equals 10, then this means the compiler will not pass A and B, will pass the value of A, which is 7, and the value of B, which is 10. This about call by value. What about call by reference? Actually, to, to pass reference means address of the variable 
we must use pointers. So using the pointer, we can pass the memory address because the pointer contains the memory address of the variable. So if we have in the memory variable A, and we pass its, va uh, its uh, address using pointer P, so we can change the original value of A because now we know the address of A. So we can change the value of the variable A inside the function. That's why we name it call by reference because we give the address, the reference of the variable for the function. So call by value or pass, pass because we pass parameters or argument for the function or pass by value will not change the original variable because it's take only the value of the original variables. But using call by reference or pass by reference, you actually pass the um, the address in the memory of this variables or of this argument. So in the function, any modification for the argument will affect the original variable. We will give examples. Okay, look here. This example for normal function, which is called by value. Okay, so for uh, call by value, um, I want to ask you something because I changed the uh, place for giving the lecture and it's a little bit a big hall. Is there is um, like echo for my voice or it's a clear? If there is no problem with my voice and it's clear, just raise your hand. I, I need to know if there is no echo and clear, just raise your hand. OK, OK, because I use all uh, also mic, so I guess it will be clear. OK, good, good that it's reached you clear. Thank you for that. Confirm here. OK, so. Um, actually, uh, call by value, it's the normal way that we use it so far. As you can see in this example, we have the main function and we have function called at 10. This function take uh, it have one argument or one uh, parameter n, so it's take value from outside for this n, then increase the uh, n value by 10 and print it. Okay, let's take the steps here. We can see the uh, time line for the uh, execution for the code, it's from left to right. The uh, up of the line here is uh, what happened in the main function. Down part, it's what's happening inside the add 10 function. Okay, first of all, integer num equal 10. Just we create a variable num and we give it initial value 10. So in the memory, it's like this. We have variable num and its value 10 and its address, for example, 1000. Okay, just imagine that its address 1000. Okay, here. We print the value of num. So first output, it's like this. 
value of num before function call and we print num. So it will print value of num blah 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 before function call and then value of num which is 10. Okay, next step, we call the function at 10. So we call this function at 10 and we give it num. What's the meaning of give it num? When we give variable, this means we give its value. So it's like we give the value of num, which is 10. Same idea here. So we give the value of num which is 10 for n. Actually, in the memory, it's like this. You will have two frames in the stack, one frame for the main function, one frame for add in the memory for add 10 function. Inside, the frame of the main function in the memory, we create a variable num. So we create a variable num and we give it initial value as 10. Okay. So when we call this function or when we uh, create this function add, we create a variable n because argument of the function, it's variable belong to the function and any variable inside it also in the same frame of the function. So n, it's a variable inside, inside add 10. Now when we call this function add 10, and we give it num, we give this value 10 to the variable n. So the variable n inside at 10, its value now 10. So when we call the function inside the main and we pass the value of num, okay, n get a copy of num value not num itself, a copy of its value. So we have in the memory of at 10, as I mentioned, variable n. For example, its address uh, 2000, 3000, we don't know the address inside the memory and its value 10. Okay, inside num, as you can see here, Inside num, we said n equal n plus 10. So we go to the memory, we have n equal 10, we increase it by 10. n equal n minus uh, plus 10 means increase the value of n by 10 and store it inside n. So the value of n is 10 plus 10, it's 20. So the new value of n is 20. Here we change the value of n. We did not change the value of num. Okay, now inside the uh, add 10 function, we have this printing. We print n. So we print inside. Okay. inside at 10 blah 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 value 10 we print n here okay finish we reach the end of the function actually when we reach the end this is what happened okay we add 10 to n okay when we reach the end of the function we release or we deallocate the memory of the function so now 
this deallocated, not available anymore, actually. And the control here returned to the main function because we finished the add them. Next step, it's to print here. So it's output. Output means the printing. When we said give the output means what the printing for the code. What the code will print on the screen. This is the meaning of get the output. Okay. What this will print? Value of num after function call and print num. So it will print value of num after function call. Sorry, this one printed 20. It's this one's inside here. N, value of N after change. It's a 20. I don't want you to confuse. I have to return to this one because I printed the wrong value. I will return to previous steps. Okay. So. So we called the function here, num uh, add 10, and we pass 10 value for n here. So n equal 10, then then we said here, then we said here, add 10 to n, so n become 20. Then we said here, a brand n. So it will be brand here, inside at 10 value. What's the value of n? It's a 20. So it will be brand 20. Okay. Reach the end of the function. This one will be deallocated and the control return here to the main function. Then it will print this one value of num after call of the function. So the output here will be value of num after call the function. What's the value of num? It's still 10. So before call the function, value of num 10. After the function, it's still same value of num. Why? Because actually num va variable, it's different than n. This one belong to the main function. This one belong to add 10. And here we only pass the value of num to n. That's why we name it call by value or pass by value. Call by reference or pass by reference, we have to use the pointers. So same idea here. Let's start from the main function. Here's a timeline for the main function up and down for the add 10. So same example, but now using call by reference. Same idea. Each function, main and add 10, will have its frame in the memory. So we have frame in the memory for main, and we will have frame in the memory for add 10. Okay, here, look to uh, add 10 function. Add 10 integer star n, what's this, what does this mean? This mean n, it's a pointer. So n variable here inside add 10, it's not integer, it's a pointer point to integer. 
So this one, it's a pointer. What is pointer? Pointer is a variable point to another variable. So n it's a pointer here. Okay. Num it's normal variable. We have in the main function we have num. And we give this num value 10. For example, this num variable, its address in the memory, for example, 1000. Okay. Now, same like a previous example, we print the value of num before call the function. So this one will print value of num before function call. What's the value of num? It's 10. Okay, next, as you can see here, add 10 address of num. What we pass here, we did not pass value of num. We passed address of num. What's this mean? This mean n as a pointer will get the address of num. So address of num, for example, in our example, 1000. So n will have the value 1000. What is the 1000? It's memory address for num. So n actually, it's a pointer for num. It's point to num. Why? Because the argument here, n, it's a pointer. And we said this pointer takes the address of num. So n point to num. So n pointer for num. So here we have num in the memory. We pass the address of num. Okay, so n as a pointer point to num now. So in the memory, as you can see, we have variable n or pointer n, its value 1000, which is address of num. So it means this n point to a num. It's a pointer for num. It could have any other address n, but what's the address value or what's the value for this pointer? It's address for a num. Now we will, now we said star n. What's the meaning of a star n? A star means value. N it's pointer. So value pointed by N, value pointed by the pointer, it's the value of num. So we see it value pointed by the pointer equals the old value pointed by N, which is 10 plus 10. So this means 10 plus 10, it's mean 20. Start here, start where? Start in the value pointed by the pointer. Pointer n pointed to num, so num become 20. Look here, when we use call by reference and we use the pointer, we change the original variable, which is num. But when we use here call by value, we did not change the original value of num okay so as you can see here num change so continue so we change the value of num in the memory still in the same address its value become 20. next step is to print this one print what print star n means value star means value Pointed by n pointer, which is value of num. So this will print inside at 10. Inside at 10 value. Okay, how much the value? 
star n means value by appointed by n, which is num value, which is 20. Finish here. Finish here, when we finish here, the memory of add 10 will be deallocated, released. But the value of num is still is a new value. It's a changed. Okay, so finish here. The control become here. This will make this a printing. What's a printing? Value of num after function call. Okay, and the print num. What's the value inside num? It's a 20. So this one will print 20. As you can see, look to the difference here. Here's the output before and after the function is cell. Why? Because we did not change the original value of num using call by value. But using call by reference, as you can see, after the function it's 10, but uh, before the function it's 10, but after the function, because the function at 10, it's become 20. So we change the original value of num using call by reference or using the pointers. Okay. Why we could use call by reference? There is many reasons to use call by reference. First reason, to keep the original value uh, of the variables. For example, imagine uh, functions that will uh, swap two value. Give A value of B, B value of A. After finish the function, you need the new value for A and B. So you can pass A and B as reference, make the swap, and you will keep the, or, uh, the new value for A and B. The other use is to return more than one value from a function. Why? Because the return keyword inside the C function when you have function doing something and you want to return a value. This return keyword can return only one value. So you can make return X, but you cannot say it return in C language, maybe in other language could happen, but in C language you cannot say return X and return y at the same time, return x and y. This not correct in C language. Okay, what if I need two values to be returned from the function? What if I need three values? Any number of values more than one. Uh, for example, if you have division function that take two numbers, then return the result of the division and reminder. So it's return one, two values. You cannot use the normal return keyword because it will not return these two values. It can return one value. What about the other one? You can use uh, call by reference to keep the value of the other uh, one. Or even you can, um, instead of use return keyword, you can use uh, call by reference to keep the value of the result and the reminder. Keep both. So you can use return keyword to return one value and then call by reference to keep the other value you can use return by reference to keep the two values, the result and reminder. I will give examples. Okay, so first example here, we will use only call by reference to return the two values. 
Second example here, we return one value, the result of the division, and we use call by reference to get the other value. So we use call by reference to get more than one value from a function after make some calculation inside the function. Okay, let's take a look here. We have the main function and we have div function, which is division. Div function here, it's take value A, value B. So we have call by reference and call by value at the same function. Here we take value A, value B, and we take a reference quotient and reference reminder. What's the idea here? Quotient means the result of the division. What's the idea of uh, pointer or reference quotient and reminder? The idea here, when we call this function, we will have in the main, uh, in the part or in the frame of the main function, okay, that will call div function, we will have a memory a place for the result of the division. We call it Q and a memory place, which is R or a variable, which is R for the reminder. Then we make or we pass this by reference. Q, we pass it by reference for curtain uh, pointer and we pass reference for R for the reminder. Then inside the function, when you calculate quotient and reminder, this mean inside the main function, you will get the value of Q and R. You will change this value. Then you will keep the result and or the quotient and the reminder after you finish. This is the idea. So the idea here we have the main memory frame and the div in memory frame. Okay. So in the main memory frame, we create variable A and we give it value, the value that we want to calculate, 76. You can uh, read this value from the user also. And variable B and its value 10. Then we have integer Q and R. So we have variable Q, variable R. At the variable Q, after calculate, we need the result to be here. At the variable R, after calculate, we need the result to be here. Then we call the function div. Look what we give for the function div. We give A, A without reference means value of A. So value of A from the main function will be stored inside value of A of the div function. So div actually have A because as we said, this A, it's different than this A. Different than means another place in the memory. Okay. Because we said argument of the function, it's a variable for this function. So what we have A, B, we have curtain, or cosh, uh, quotient or something like this, the pronunciation. And we have a reminder. Here, quotient and reminder, it's actually pointers, okay? So, now when we call the function div, we give the value of A to 
a inside div. So value of a is 76. We give it here. Copy of the value. OK, and copy of P from the main, we give it for P in the tab. So another copy here, 10. And address of the Q, for example, if the Q variable have address 1000, then we give it address for the quotient pointer. So this will store the address of the Q. This means it's point to Q. And reminder, take the address of R. So address of R, we give it for the reminder. For example, imagine that R have address 2000. This mean reminder have value 2000, which is the address of R. This mean it's point to R. Okay, so it's like this. Now, inside div function, we said value, star means value. Value pointed by quotient, which is value of a Q, because quotient point to Q, equal A divided by B. A divided by B, so, a, which is 76, divided by B, A, which is 76, divided by B, which is 10, it's equal 7. Why it's equal 7? Because A, B, and the value pointed by the point are all its integer. So it's not 7.6 because integer don't have points. So don't have any fraction. So the value is 7. So this mean value of Q is 7. Because star quotient means value pointed by a Q, which, uh, by quotient, which is a Q. So Q, this mean a Q equal A divided by B. So it's equal seven. Same idea here. As you can see, next statement, it's a star reminder. What's the meaning of a star reminder? A star means value. Value pointed by reminder. Value pointed by reminder means R equal a which is 76 mod or the reminder mod b b which is 10. so what's the reminder when we divide 76 by 10 the reminder is 6 so value of r is 6 here okay Finish the function, finish the function. The memory will be released of this function. Dev, we return to the main function. Okay, so in the main function, what's the next step? What's the output? Print if quotient is. Percent D, this mean first variable here. Reminder is percent D means second variable here. So this will print quotient is. What's the value of Q? It's seven. Reminder is what's the value of R? It's six. So we keep the values, the calculated value for the quotient and the reminder after we finish the function. Like this, the function calculates the value and we keep it because we use here call by reference. Okay, if we have max here, uh, return and 
one for uh, as a pointer or as call by reference. So here, same code, but the result, we will not return it as pointer, as reference, we will return it using return A divided by B. So this will return uh, the value of the division, and we still use reminder as reference. So what's the difference here? We don't need the quotient reference. We use only reminder reference. What about the quotient or the result? We return it as A divided by P. So when we return from a function, we can take it inside the Q, the return value. We can take it inside the Q. So now Q have the result. And R, because we pass it as reference, have the reminder. Then we can print Q and R. OK, all this was from previous week. We still have uh, this week lecture note. Do you have any question before move to the next lecture note? OK, so uh, I will move to next lecture note. We sell in the pointer. OK, so. Why it's okay. here. OK, we sell in the pointers. So we have last part of the pointers. Or uh, third part of the pointers. which is the relation between the pointer and dynamic memory. So here we speak about dynamic memory allocation, and it's important subject, by the way, so you have to focus here. Dynamic, all the subjects is important, to be honest. Okay, dynamic memory allocation, what does this mean? Uh, when you ex execute or run any program in C language, you will reserve two types of memory, stack and heap. The stack memory, it's a memory space for the function and it's local variable, like any variable inside declared inside the function, and any variable declared as argument for the function or uh, uh, parameters of the function. So this all will be uh, stored in the stack. What about the heap? We mentioned many times the heap, but we did not use it so far. How to use the heap? It's a reserved memory for your uh, C program, and it's empty section of the uh, memory reserved for you to be used. Actually, it's a type of memory that you can allocate it and use it during the runtime. So, the stack and uh, other type of memory, you have to book it to reserve it before run the program. But heap memory, it's a part of the memory that you can reserve it, book it, and use it during the runtime. And this will give you, uh, of course, more flexibility here. Okay, so. Let's first speak about the difference between a stack and heap. So here you can see, just uh, imagine on how the stack it's work and how the heap. The stack it's actually, as you can see, it's a contiguous memory. So you have first frame, second frame, third frame, 
So it's contiguous, mean uh, in specific uh, order and all parts of the memory, each part come after the uh, other part. OK. We use it for the local variable. So it will be automatic allocated and deallocated by the uh, compiler and the operating system. You as a programmer, you don't need to allocate and deallocate the memory. It will be automatically. And it's also limited. So the stack has specific size for the frames. So it's limited. That's why if you put too much information inside the stack, you will reach something called the stack overflow, means the stack is full. By the way, stack overflow, it's uh, uh, a name of uh, one of the famous uh, websites, a uh, website for the uh, programming, the uh, help between the programmers. Uh, its name comes from this one, stack overflow. Maybe currently you will do not hear about Stack Overflow because the RAM now it's very big comparing with previous uh, days. Um, and um, it's um, very rare to reach the Stack Overflow. But uh, when I start as uh, studying uh, and start as a programmer, um, any problem with uh, 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 loops or uh, um, any problem with your code, you will use too much information inside the stack, then you will get crash for the program and you will get this message stack over. A flow because I speak about RAM six, uh, 16 or 32 megabyte. Now you speak about uh, gigabytes or more, even okay, of RAM. So you use different in the size. That's why maybe you don't face this stack overflow, but we was facing it. Okay, about the heap. Heap, it's a dynamic storage. Dynamic means at the runtime you can use this storage. Actually, it's a large pool of memory. Actually, it's almost the empty size of the memory. So its limit, it's the size of the memory limit, not like the stack. So you can consider it unlimited comparing with the stack, but it still have limit what's the limit the empty size of the memory okay not allocated contiguous in contiguous order what this mean this mean you will store data here next time the data will be stored here next time data will be stored here next time data will be stored in another place depend on the empty areas of the memory Heap is a dynamic storage. What this means? This means it will be allocated during the runtime. Okay, if it's allocated during the runtime, then you as a programmer, you have to mention this explicitly. You have to give the order explicitly to allocate this memory. How to use it? Using uh, how to do this explicit allocation. Here you have to tell the operating systems that you need this part from the memory using some functions like M allocation, memory allocation function, uh, C allocation function, reallocation functions. We will mention this functions and the difference between them. And also you have to deallocate, free the memory from uh, this part that you, reser you reserve 
because if you did not freeze the memory after finish using the memory, this means the memory will reach uh, full use in um, specific time. OK, so after you finish using the memory, you need to freeze the space that you use using a free function. So this is another uh, difference between stack and heal. Stack, it's automatic. You don't, as a programmer, you don't need to allocate and deallocate the space in the stack. It's It will be done automatically. But in the heap, you have to uh, explicitly, or let's say manually, allocate the memory and deallocate the memory. And it's important way by, by the way, it's important to use the heap because it gives you flexibility to use the uh, size of uh, the array and the memory. Um, OK, so we can imagine it like this. Also, another issue, heap is slower than the stack. Why heap is slower than the stack? Look here, you will understand. Stack, it's contiguous. So finish this one, you move to the next one, next one, next one. To, so reach data in the same area. It's very fast. Comparing with, with the heap, okay, you use this part, then search for another part, and it's a huge memory, then you find the other data here. You don't know that it's here. The stack, you know that each frame, it's follows the other frame. OK. So uh, heap also managed by you as a programmer, not automatically. OK, to manage by you there and means allocated by you and deallocated by you, you will have functions to manage or to allocate and deallocate the heap. Heap needs pointers to reach it. Why? Because uh, in the functions, any var variables declared in the function it will be stored in the stack. So to reach the heap and use the heap, you need to create a pointer from the stack to the heap. So you need to create pointer. So to access the heap, you need pointers. This is another use for the pointers. So until now, many use for the pointer for example, it's uh, last time we take that, it's better for managing the memory uh, when we speak about array and uh, we don't need to have uh, just empty space, empty useless space uh, for call by reference here for using the heap and later we will see it after uh, or maybe next lecture or after few lecture we will see the linked list also another use for the pointer so pointer it's uh, important subject here so if you look to this code look here integer star p what's the meaning of integer star p means create a pointer p from type integer this means it's point to integer value. Actually, here, this one means in the stack, if you imagine that, this is the stack and this is the heap. This part the heap, this part the stack. In the stack, we have a frame for the main function. Inside it, we create a pointer P. So P, it's a pointer. It's still do not point to anything until now. Next step, we said that this pointer P, it's point to 
memory allocation and we give size two multiply by five. What's the meaning of two multiply by five? Two multiply by five, it's 10 bytes. Because when we speak about memory size, we speak about bytes. Then why we did not uh, say 10? You can say 10, it's okay. Uh, because memory allocation here, it's not, uh, uh, it's not to speak about elements, it's to speak about bytes. So we have 10 bytes. But when you said here before it, integer pointer, so integer pointer, if the integer take two bytes, then this 10 bytes will be divided into Two, 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 it's become five elements. Okay. Now, point RP, point to this memory allocation. Imagine that the first address in this memory allocation 500. This means this pointer have the address inside the heap to point it. So, have the address 500. We will return for this. Uh, for more detail. It's only for clarification. To reach the heap, you need pointer to point for this place in the heap. So usually it's like array. So we can we can name this one as a dynamic array because we can change it. Okay, so dynamic memory allocation. The normal array, regular array, okay, when you create array, when you said integer a 10, like this, we create array of 10 elements. Okay, we create integer array of 10 elements. We have fixed number of values because we have fixed size, which is 10. And you cannot change it after you run the program. You can change the code, but if you give the executable program or after run the program from the user, the change of the array cannot be changed. The size of the array cannot be changed. But sometimes we need to change the size for best memory management. For example, why I should use something like this integer a, for example, 100, then I find myself using only five elements. So if you book array 100 elements and you use only five elements, this means 95 percent of the array, it's useless. So sometimes you need to uh, size or resize uh, this array. Maybe you need more elements. You only book 10 elements and you need more elements. So the normal array, you cannot change the size after or during the run time. To solve this issue, we can use the dynamic memory allocation, or you can allocate the memory manually during the runtime. Manually during the runtime means using dynamic memory allocation. This is known as dynamic memory allocation. So you can dynamically allocate a place for the array using function like memory allocation, C allocation. You can change the size of the array after you create it using C allocation or M allocation, using reallocation to change the size. After you use this uh, array or uh, dynamic memory, 
you can free it using or you can release it, deallocate it using free function. All this function, am um, allocation, C allocation, reallocation, free, it's in the STD library. Okay, STD library. So to use them, you need to call or to include this library. Okay, we will take one by one the functions one by one and we will give example. Maybe we will finish, I think, on time or maybe we will take extra five minutes. Okay. Uh. Okay, so. The first function, which is M allocation, it stands for memory allocation. So this function, it will be used for memory allocation to reserve a block of memory that have a number of bytes. So we don't care about the variables here. We reserve a block of memory in the heap. This block of memory have size of bytes. How many bytes we need? I'm allocate, don't care, but you as a programmer care. You have to know how to know. To know it, you have to know how many elements n elements multiply by the size of each element this how many bytes you need number of elements okay i need five elements multiply by size of each element okay to get size of any elements you need to know the data type so it's multiply by we can get the size of the data type using the function size of. So usually we use size of, then we write the data type, for example, integer, then it will give us the size of the integer. For example, a float, it will give us the size of the float. Okay, so, like this, we give how many bytes we need. Why we could use size of a float? Okay, someone will say, okay, we know that the float four bytes. It's four bytes inside your computer. Maybe inside another computer, it will be eight. If you did not use size of, and instead of size of, you put four, this means if in another computer the float take eight bytes, this byte that you reserve, it's not enough. So we use size of to make our code portable, to make our code usable in any computer, because size of will take the size of this variable, this block inside the computer that you run the code. So, uh, the advice here to use size of, to get the size of the float or the integer or the double before use it, because it's different from one computer to another computer. It could be for most of our computer for, for a float, but in other computer it could be it. So, the syntax of memory allocation is like this. It's take only the size, how many bytes. It doesn't care by number of elements. And it will uh, book in the heap the number of bytes. And as a function, it will return a pointer of void. What's the meaning of pointer of void? Pointer that point for uh, unknown, unknown 
value. That's why you need something called casting. Cast, it's to change from one type to another type. If you have, for example, uh, integer x, and you want to change it to float, then you will set float like this, float x. Here we make casting. We change x from integer to float. Same idea here. A pointer void means a pointer void means it will give us pointer from a non type. That's why you need cast type of the pointer. What's the meaning of cast type? Means the data type of the pointer. After that, you need a pointer to point for this memory allocation. This example. In this example, we need 100 elements of a float. You can give Okay, 400, because we know that's a float for, yes? No, but in some computer, maybe it will not work like this, because the float have different size. So, I will say I need 100 element multiply by size of a float. So, if in my computer float is 4, this mean 100 multiply by 4, this mean 400, bytes, so 400 bytes in the uh, memory. Now, float star, now it's known that it's a float, so it will be divided into 100 elements. Start index from 0, 1, 2, until 99. How it's known? It's depend on this one, the casting pointer data type, which is float. This means each four bytes, if the float size four bytes, will be one element. Now we said BTR point to this one, so BTR point to the first element. So it's like you have array of size 100 and pointer BTR pointed to this array. But the difference here is that the size of the array is allocated during the runtime and can be changed. Okay, actually, best idea here to you to book only one element, not hundred like here, one element. After use it, if you want to use another element, you can increase the size. We will take another function that can increase the size of the dynamic allocated or the dynamic array, okay? Another function, which is C allocate. C allocate is very similar to uh, M allocate. The difference here that C allocate, C it's meaning contiguous. Contiguous means all the element come as a serial, okay? Come after each other. So all the memory will be allocated as contiguous. Okay, the other different, M allocate did, do not initial, uh, make initialization for the uh, memory. But C allocate make initialization to zero. Another different C allocate it's care about elements and element size. M allocate you give only the size. It's not care about what elements you have. But C allocate it's take two parameters. First parameter, number of elements. Second parameter, size of each element. Then cast type and pointer, same like M allocation. So this example, we need 25 elements of the floats. 
So we will set the number of elements. It's 25. Size of each element, it's size of a float. So it will know that each element size is four bytes. If my computer float four bytes, maybe in another computer it's uh, eight bytes and so on. Okay. And all elements will be contiguous and indexed from zero, one, two, three, and so on. Another function, I will give a description for all the functions, then I will give the examples. Okay. So, reallocation, RE allocation, it's mean reallocation function. Um, sometimes you allocate a size using m allocate or c allocate okay so reallocate come after after m allocate or c allocate to change the size of allocated memory so if we need uh, more size, if we require more size than the allocated memory using M allocate or C allocate, we can use reallocate to change the size. So actually it's a common idea. We usually start with one uh, element size using M allocate or C allocate. And every time we need more size, we change the size using reallocate. So we can change the size of the uh, dynamic memory allocation using reallocate. Okay. Memory, allocated memory. Usually we reach it using pointer. So, or we have to reach it using pointer. Either we use C allocate or we use M allocate. We use pointer to point to the memory. To change the size, we have to use this pointer to set that memory allocated uh, or pointed by this pointer, we will change its size. So first argument, for the reallocate, it's the pointer. So it says that memory, memory, dynamic memory, pointed by this pointer. Okay. And the other argument is the new size. So X means the new size of the uh, dynamic memory. So first one, it's the pointer pointed to the dynamic memory. The second argument, the uh, new size, how many bytes, the new size. Okay, what else? Here, the pointer again. This pointer name must be same, like this pointer. All this means you will change the pointer. So usually, usually it's usually it will be same name because we change we are trying to change the size of ptr so we said the new size of ptr it's this size okay free function to free a memory uh, or dynamic memory you only need the pointer so you said the free pointer means the free the memory pointed by this pointer or deallocate the memory pointed by this pointer so as you can see memory a dynamic memory allocation it's depend totally in the pointer to book the memory or to reserve it you use the pointer to free it you use the pointer to free it okay so we can take uh, 
this example, we still have two examples. Okay. Uh, I need around 10 minutes. To finish or less, hopefully. So this example for dynamic memory allocation and arrays because usually we use it as array actually we will not create array but the pointer when you said okay i need to book size okay uh, 40 bytes using dynamic memory and this 40 bytes pointed by pointer BTR and this BTR is integer pointer. And we know that integer pointer uh, or integer value is four bytes. This means this pointer knows that each element actually its size four. So this means the 40 bytes it's uh, for 10 elements because each element take um, four bytes and the index is started from zero, one, two, three until nine. So array and we have pointer point to the array. We can move this pointer to the next element, to the next element using two ways. We can use a pointer plus plus to move forward pointer minus minus to use backward but i don't advise to use this way okay because like this you can use memory outside the range here uh, or here so to use a specific uh, the specific range for you it's better to move using the index Okay, so we will use the index to move inside this dynamic array, like PTR7 means go or point to the seventh element. PTR0 means point to element zero, and so on. So it's better to use the index like this. So in this example, In this example, we create a pointer. So if we imagine that we have in the program, we have two types of memory. We have here and we have a stack. Okay. When we say the create pointer BTR, so it's in the stack. We have pointer BTR. Okay, it's value still null. Integer n i we we have in the stack integer n and variable i. Okay. We ask the user to give us how many elements and we read n. So n it's number of elements that will be created in the dynamic memory. So for example, if the user as my example here for the output, if the user said seven, so we read n as seven. Okay, here we need to create in the memory number of elements as n. So we said n, which is seven, multiply by size of integer. Why I write size of integer? Because I need as you can see here, the pointer, it's integer. So I need to store integer values. So I said size of integer multiplied by number of elements. So seven multiplied by four, if we said that the size uh, of integer four bytes, so size of integer four bytes multiplied by seven, uh, it's give you 28 bytes in the memory. 28 bytes in the memory, we 
said the type cast its integer pointer, so it will be divided into four four bytes. This means we have seven elements from zero, one, two until element number six, because we started from zero. And we said the pointer pointed to this memory allocation. So this pointer point here. For example, if the uh, memory address here 1000, so the pointer value is 1000 to point for the first element. Okay. Here, first of all, we need to check if the dynamic memory allocation works successfully. Because, for example, if the memory fall or uh, something wrong happen, if you did not check, then later your program will be crash and stop during the runtime. So to avoid this, we need to check if the pointer point to something in the heap, so everything OK and no problem with the dynamic memory. But if the pointer equal null, what's the meaning equal null? This means the pointer is still empty and not point to anything in this case we can we cannot use the memory then we will set memory not allocated and we exit the code exit zero means exit the program it's same like return zero or return one also same way else means yes the dynamic memory allocates successfully and this point our point here in this case, here our program only take each element using pointer and index of the element. We take the index using for loop for 0 to n means uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 until uh, one value before n. i plus 1 means if the index 0, give it value 0 plus 1, which is 1. So at element 0, we store 1. At element 1, it's 1 plus 1, because I1, the index 1, so it will store 2. At element 2, store 3. At element 3, store 4, until at element 6, store 7. You can you can say uh, I you can say anything you can read the value from the user and store it just for simplicity here uh, we use the for loop only to uh, give the value but you can read the value from the user please give me first value and you can read it and store it inside the index a specific index the idea here it's like any normal array we use the index here to use the element pointed by ptr okay like any normal array the difference here it's dynamic and we can change the size of the array after we store here we print only so we said for zero to size print PTRI. This prints the elements. This will print one, two, three. The elements start here. The value means. What's the meaning? Uh, address or and PTR means the address of each element. So if this element address 1000, it will print 1000. Second element and so on. As you can see here, the address in the memory for the first element, the address in the memory for the second. So it's address of each element, element zero, element one, element two, and so on. Here's the value of each element. So here's the value here, the address. Why we did not use a star? Because you can use a star with a plus a plus, or you can use the index, which is, I, okay, 
index. If you use index, you don't need to use a star because you use it not like a pointer. You use it same like the array. So you don't need here star. Okay. Um, you can watch the video of this subject, which is fun or let, let me finish the function pointer. Or I will share. OK, I will share the video of the uh, other section. It's a small uh, subject. OK, it's like you can make pointer for any variable. You can make pointer for any function. OK. Watch the video, you will understand it. OK. About the examples, we have examples from one. OK to four. This example, I will share video with you describing this examples because there is no time. We already finished our lecture. I cannot give the examples. However, I give example for each point, but this extra examples, I will give you video. You can watch this extra examples, inshallah. That's all for today. If you have any question before we finish, um, we already finished our time and even more. Must end at 12, but now 12, 12. OK, do you have any question? OK, keep watching the um, Telegram group because I will give you the instruction, more instruction. I will share uh, the videos, uh, the video for the examples with you. So you have to watch the video and I will give you instruction about the exam also uh, later inshallah in uh, as a video in our telegram group so that's all for today see you inshallah on uh, Wednesday or on uh, next week inshallah